Hello guys, I know this isn't the part that we left off on. Like I said, I would skip before anyway, and I slightly went too far ahead. A little bit. So, to give you a run up, let's go fake the stomach ache. She's now trapped in her room until the festival is over because of her mother, the Dragon Lady. I snacked on bread while I waited for Risco to arrive when suddenly I got an email. Ah, a disappointing noise slipped from my lips. It was from Risco and it said I suddenly don't feel well. That's too bad. I suddenly realized I had forgotten to chew and swallowed what was in my mouth. The delicious bread suddenly tasted like ash. Has anyone ever tasted ash before? I have once. Because my uncle literally shoved it down my throat. It was not a pleasant thing. And it was freshly burnt ash too. So. <sighs> I was disappointed but I was also worried. I wanted to see how she was doing but it would be trouble if the headmistress found out. Oh, I know. I stood up, walked around to each exhibit. She got a reply from Miss Ayamili. Let me know if you're feeling better. She could leave her room after the cultural festival ended without being scolded. It would all be for nothing, of course, but she had to apologize properly to Messiah. And so Risco wrote back to him, okay. Nope, my sister's currently watching Devil as a part-timer in the other room. Oh, please try to ignore any music or background sounds or any form of talking from her over there. As long as we were meeting up, we decided to meet in the Rose Garden. It was actually after curfew for the doors, but Risco came along without objections. I'm sure you're feeling a little better. Even so... She had spent the whole time staring at the ground and didn't seem to have much energy. I hope I don't get a copyright strike because I can hear the background music clearly. Uh. Oh, uh, not at all. I guess that's what she's worried about. But you can't help it. You just weren't feeling well. Was it a cold? Although I do like, but that was a part-time her intros. I love the song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. guys. Ah, I see. I shut my head silently. Then maybe this was all pointless. I looked down at the paper bag in my hand. But Konomi was really disappointed. She wanted to s you to see her heroic deeds. She cut through bamboo wrapped in a straw with a single blow from a real sword. Apparently cutting through straw strap bamboo feels a lot like cutting through a person she said unseemingly happy about it. Naturally the rose garden was completely deserted at night. Is it too cold? Now leaving the dorm at night is a violation of dorm and school rules but I thought it would be nice. Point! <laughs> oh, oops. Um. I see. It was a bold statement coming from Risco, and I felt my heart skip a beat. We walked up to the table, and I laid out the paper bag. Uh, are you hungry, or should I ask, is your stomach feeling okay? I'll, I'm glad to hear it. I rummaged through the bag and pulled something out. It started, it's already cold, but I was hoping the thought might count. After I got the message from Risco, I went all around to all the exhibits and took a sample, a sampling of the food here. A baguette from the baking club, french fries from our class. There was also takoyaki, taiyaki, hot dogs, and other stand-up festival foods. Takoyaki. Taco. Taiyaki, that one I know. That one is actually my favorite. <laughs> uh, but if you're just getting off on 
a stomach ache. Maybe it's best if you don't eat anything. It might cause a relapse. It was a strong response then than I expected. I, w I was a little surprised. All right then, let's eat. I transferred some of the baking, all this black tea into a thermos, so it was still a little warm. All right, let's eat. Try some of the fries our class made them ourselves. We made them ourselves. It had certainly been delicious when they were fresh, but it was strange when eating them. Guess what? What? The purple lazy dude came in. Purple what? What? Purple hair lazy dude. Short, sorry like a kid, tried to kill him. Are you talking about Lucifer? Yeah! Lazy too! <laughs> yeah, Monique is actually one of them, her many favorite characters is Lucifer. <laughs> Lucifer, 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 Lucifer! Lazy. Because she has the same personality. Minus one. <laughs> That'll be this. Oh. What did you hit? She's. <laughs> She did it almost a split, too. <laughs> no one can see you, by the way. Um, hold up. Stay right there. <laughs> She's on the ground. <laughs> I slipped. And my leg hit the, your uh, air leg. And then it was my... You mean my desk leg? Yeah, and then my, my uh, foot slid. <laughs> uh, Lucifer! <laughs> Don't forget his nickname. Lazy something. Uh, is. Was it Yashida or something? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was something with a Y. You guys can comment if you want. Um. Yeah, I forget. So, go. Yeah. And then, well, I was going to turn the knob, but I went like this. I was about to turn it, and it just burst right open. <laughs> Did you literally almost break my door? Yeah. My neck? My neck? Shut. It has certainly been delicious. Maybe it was a bad idea, but Risco didn't look unhappy. He's very hungry, so I first focused on eating for a little while. I saw something shining in Risco's cheek. And note yes. I feel like crying. I don't know what's wrong with my right eye at the moment. It's from position from the game. What? Can you open up this window for magic? Watch out. Why don't you? Too comfy. My neck. You're not Lucifer. And she's your cat. And plus, didn't, weren't you the one that said you're too afraid to learn outside? I'm no different here. Nope. That conversation didn't even dream me up. I still feel like... Hmm. I stared at, at her in surprise. It wasn't just a trick of the light. Risco's eyes and face were wet with tears. But what's wrong? I was completely taken back. She looked down at the table, her shoulders trembling. Eat one of my many weaknesses. A girl crying in front of me. It could be either, either a habit from the times that I was raised at a gentleman's club. It could be something that I personally developed through school years because literally every girl used me as a shield against bullies but I can not never ever stand seeing that my sister is the exception though of seeing her cry because she mostly fakes it most of the time I didn't know what was going on exactly but it pained me to see her crying like this me double I hadn't brought handkerchiefs, so I wiped her tears with my fingers. I feel like I'm about to go into tears there. But the tears kept wailing over without end. Does your stomach hurt after all? I wanted to ask just to be sure. 
As I expected, Briscoe shook her head, stroked her hair gently. Her black hair looked so glossy, so close, and it felt sleep beneath my hand. I don't like this? She shook her head again. As I stroked her hair, her crying died down. What's going on? I repeat the, my question. The food, you mean? If that was all, it seemed a little bit of an overreaction. I feel like my eyes are hurting actually like your plan let's go bow to me That's right, Konomi mentioned that this afternoon she's as you've been leaving school once a month. She said you usually get back in the evening, so that was supposed to be the case today too. Let's go nodded. I see. Glad then, so you weren't really feeling bad. I was worried about you, that's all. Not at all. Uh, answer? I don't know what she's talking about. Risco turned bright red. Uh, right? She had kept me hanging. I strained up a little. What else would you go with? I like you. I love you. I... <laughs> of course, so tell me. Let's go put a hand on her breast and took in a deep breath. It was a little funny to watch her. She finally looked up and spoke again. And the guitar music. The guitar music. <laughs> uh, uh, oh my my heart. <laughs> in my face. I can't stop smiling and it's actually hurting my cheeks. I don't no, quite how to express how I felt in that moment. It was a little like I would felt the day before when she agreed to go to the coal festival with me. But even though the feelings themselves were similar, the intensity was completely different. Yesterday I feel like I was floating on air. Today I felt like I could fly to the moon. I'm glad <laughs> those simple words slipped from my mouth. So, um, I looked into her tear-stained eyes. She really was beautiful. Do you want to date? Let's go open her mouth to answer, but her reply seemed to be caught in her throat. Instead, she just nodded. A girlfriend. Me with a beauty like her. It happened some time since the confession, but it still didn't feel real. I can't stop smiling! <laughs> Yeah, my heart was bursting with happiness, but in that instant, she looked at me with a tormented expression. Yeah. And this is where I despised, uh, and they had to make the music stop, even though that music was beautiful in its own right. <laughs> I don't know why, but I like guitar mu music when it comes to romantic situations. It was 
some other instances that I absolutely enjoy me music for a, for a moment. After Roscoe's confession, we moved to the cathedral. It was a short walk, but we didn't say one word to each other the entire time my head was spinning. She has a fiancé. That word, fiancé, it kept running in circles in my head, round and round, coming to nothing. I waited until we were sitting to speak. What do you mean? I like to hear the whole story. Think she had the choice, and she chose. True, our character, but the character's not to me, so I feel like it's also to me too. But the, and also, not to mention my mentality, I literally put myself in the to the character's shoes. That way, it, even if they feel pain, I feel pain. Like I feel like I'm about to die. I'm actually going to feel like I'm about to die. Like that's how serious my mentality is when it comes to me playing games. I literally get a full emotion rush. From every time I do that mentality and I can't turn it off like it's permanently stuck so <laughs> not that much I really love this game I absolutely love it I can't see anything bad with it so maybe you should die down on the headmistress just a little just a little. That's too much bitch at once. Like, I dealt with literally bad, messed up people before. But that one takes the cake. I even seen people worse than her. If you've seen the show Dance Moms. God damn that instructor was the real bitch. I felt like punching her in the face so many freaking times. You don't treat kids like that. You don't treat kids like that. Why do you do that? She even threw a chair at one. You don't do that. That's abuse. Like what the fuck? But anyway, I even forgot her name but completely. I don't really pay attention at all. I just know she's a bat, bat, ugly, messed up, angry bitch who hurts kids. Like, you don't do that. That's messed up. You're supposed to be supportive. Support. You're supposed to be an instructor, a teacher, not a tormentor. <laughs> These are kids. Kids. Focus on the word. <laughs> These are not adults. I can understand doing that to an adult, although not throwing a chair at one. Please don't throw a chair at one. But come on. You don't do that to a kid. No. She looks straight into my eyes. Maybe it was self-serving of me, but that one phrase dispelled all my anxiety immediately. Then she explained the situation. Just as I expected, it was her parents. In other words, the headmistress, because the father didn't really matter along as Risco was happy. Who had arranged the marriage. Money. In other words, she wants you to marry him so he'll use his money to support business. That's awful. I burped out the words without thinking. That mistress could certainly be strict, but I never would have imagined she would force her daughter into marriage over something like that. I wonder why she's so attached to it. Let's go shook her head. I 
I see. Sister Mashima had mentioned before that nearly all of Vesna's teachers were alumni, including Sister Mashima herself. I can imagine how that alone could create strong ties to the school. At the same time, Vesna was physically isolated, spending so many years here in that closed off environment. It wasn't hard to imagine that a person could become so deeply attached. But if it stayed like that, it would still die. True money doesn't grow on trees, but it is made by trees. Think paper. Paper are also some small elastic thing now, recently, that they added. But still, it's made from trees. But, you can't. Let's go explain how the seats of Vesna's board were passed down through 12 family lines, mirroring Christ's 12 disciples. Said then most disciples betrayed Jesus at the end? I'm pretty sure they did. The most influential were Ritzko's, Ritzko's Kitamada, Kitamikaido, Kitamikaido, Rosanen and Marika's Miyogi. Miyogi. Mogi. So you will inherit her seat too. I see. That's what she wanted, then I was glad to hear it. Here's the thing, I think parents should try to understand their kids more, just a little. I'll probably re remove some lesser, deeper problems. Like, I was pr practically raising myself. I was pretty much alone. So, I don't really re rely much on people, but... What does, what do you mean? Risco trailed off, her cheeks flushed, and she turned to gaze into my eyes. Hey. Of course you can't. And also, what the fuck? What are you doing on the floor? What are you doing? Hold up. She's on the floor right now. No. Monique, I don't really have many minutes here. Don't move the TV. No! Don't put that back! Look at that! Put that back! She's freaking out over uh, Satan's abs. Put a hand on her shoulder just like last night. I could feel her body was softer than her fragile exterior suggested. Did you tell the headmistress? Oh well, about me or about the fact that you don't want to get married, of course. I see. Not even once? She nodded. How come? Are you scared?
Gonna roll. Oh, I didn't know that. I was a little surprised. It was hard to imagine something like that happening under the logical, renowned Kimakaido family name. So part of being a good girl means that you have to accept your mother's talk of marriage. Which means I guess we'll just have to <laughs> you'll just have to become a bad girl, huh? Oh. Ah. Risco placed her her hand over my hand on her shoulder and closed her eyes. I can't stop it. The smile. Her eyes were closed. Her expression unguarded. Watching her caused my heart to race. Me hate you? I would never hate you, and I couldn't help if you couldn't if you never told me. But now that you told me. I can probably back you up somehow. Yeah, I nodded firmly. Give Risco up to some other guy? There is no way... Well, let me add a few lines. There is no way in hell that I'm letting that happen. <laughs> That's right. That's the first thing you need to do. Really? The mistress was already ha already had a grudge against me. She learned that Risco and I were in love. There was no telling what she'd do. Just thinking about it made me nervous. Emistress had lost her head over me being in the room with Frisco, even though there were other people there. You're probably right. Frisco nodded. Right. We returned to the dorm. My room was on the first floor, so it was easy to get in through the veranda. Risco was was curious, like carrying her shoes in her hand. Sure, I'll be there. Yeah, I checked to see if anyone was in the hallway, then sent Risco on her way. You. Once I was alone, I flopped down to a bed. Tied by a vague feeling of despondency. It wasn't a bad feeling, though. I had come to an understanding with the first girl I ever loved. I was going to help share her burden. Overcome by a pleasant exhaustion, I closed my eyes, let my consciousness drift off like waves against the shore. I can't... I cannot stop! <laughs> Oh, but more beautiful music. The music always gets me in visual novels. <laughs> the next night, I, won I went to meet her in the cathedral as promised. This time, Risco said she'd go through one of the designated exit rooms rather than my own. As Ririko mentioned before, there were rooms set aside letting people leave the dorm after curfew. And I'm going to have to go to the next part for this.